After a short break, Iron Maiden are back on the road. Welcome boys and girls, how are you? And before stepping on the North American soil, the boys also went to Brazil, where they once again headlined the legendary Rock in Rio. <laughs> And thus, I thought it would be appropriate to discuss the 37-year-long love and hate relationship between Iron Maiden and Rock and Rio. So let's do it. Here you go. The first time Iron Maiden performed at Rock and Rio was all the way back in 1985. By then, Steve Harris and the team were, of course, no strangers to the world of heavy metal and have been rocking the world for over five years after the release of their self titled debut record. <laughs> Thus, of course, the only reason it was their first appearance at Rock and Rio was very simple. It was the first Rock and Rio ever. Yet, technically, Iron Maiden weren't really the headliners of Rock and Rio back in 1985, as they were opening for another British rock band, Queen, who, by the way, released one of the greatest live albums ever at that show. <laughs> In addition, in 1985, Iron Maiden performed on the very first night of Rock and Rio, thus becoming one of the first five bands to ever step on a Rock and Rio stage. <laughs> Yet at the same time, Iron Maiden became the only non Brazilian band at that festival who performed only on one night. Everybody else, including Queen, Rod Stewart, Ozzy Osbourne, ACDC, Scorpions, and everybody else, yeah, by the way, the lineup there was absolutely kick-ass, performed twice during that nine-day period. Yet in 1985, Iron Maiden were, of course, in the middle of their massive world slavery tour, which lasted for 189 shows, and thus had a pretty busy schedule, as Iron Maiden were actually in the middle of their US tour and were hurrying to perform the shows in Connecticut and Massachusetts. <laughs> By the way, just a couple of days ago, Iron Maiden kicked off their US leg of the Legacy of the Beast tour with the shows in El Paso and Austin, Texas. So if you are one of those lucky people who are able to see Iron Maiden on that tour, please do let us know in the comments where exactly you're planning to see them. Because we all know this is the closest I get to see Iron Maiden this year because of the war in my country. The setlist for the 1985 appearance at Rock in Rio was no different from pretty much any other concert on the World Slavery Tour, and yet it possibly was one of the most bloody shows in the Iron Maiden career. <laughs> Son into the set list, that being Revelations, Bruce Dickinson, as always on that tour, picked up his guitar to perform the song on stage. Yet after playing his bit for a while, he left the stage just to return back in a couple of minutes with his face covered in blood. By the way, so many people on the internet for some reason keep saying that while playing guitar, Bruce Dickinson actually broke his string, which then cut his eye. Which, of course, is not true. <laughs> Yet that bloody accident was actually not the only thing which distinguishes the first Iron Maiden appearance at Rock in Rio from all the other concerts they ever did throughout their career. For until this day, it actually remains the concert with the biggest live attendance in the entire Iron Maiden career, with more than 300,000 people in the crowd. <laughs> Iron Maiden once again made millions heavy metal maniacs around the world extremely happy. For their legendary vocalist Bruce Dickinson and the guitarist Adrian Smith both returned to the band after a long, long hiatus. And after going around the world together in support of their first reunion album Brave New World, Iron Maiden 16 years after their first appearance at Rock and Rio in 1985 once again made a stop in Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> Oh, 
And once again, just like in 1985, Iron Maiden somewhat reopened Rock and Rio. For by that time, most people actually did not believe Rock and Rio would ever happen again, since it has been on a 10 year long break after being rocked by Judas Priest and Guns N' Roses in 1991. And while those two shows in 1985 and in 1991 technically were very similar, in reality they were nothing alike. For this time Iron Maiden returned to Rock and Rio as headliner, who has just reunited and has been making the covers of pretty much all rock magazines around the world. And thus in order to celebrate that occasion, Iron Maiden decided to properly record their second appearance at Rock and Rio in 2001, and of course released one of the most beloved live albums from that show. <laughs> By the way, another person who was also part of that celebration and performed at Rock and Rio that same day before Iron Maiden was of course the legendary metal god himself, Mr. Rob Halford, who was then going on the solo and of war with his band called, well, Halford. And yes, seeing his friends being super happy joining the forces together on stage once again after a long, long break was also one of those things which helped him make a decision to go back and reunite with Judas Priest in a year and a half from then. While Iron Maiden reunion and their return to Rock and Rio was of course a very joyous occasion, the boys' mood was in fact rather great by the news they've heard just a couple of weeks before that. Right before Christmas, the band's manager Rod Smallwood broke the news to the boys that the ex-Iron Maiden drummer Clive Burr, who helped forge the early Iron Maiden sound and of course appeared in the first three records by Maiden was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. The news which of course shocked the entire Iron Maiden family to their core. And so the boys over at Iron Maiden actually decided to help Clive financially. According to some sources on the internet, all of the profits from the band's 2001 appearance at Rock and Rio actually went in support of Clive Burr's MS Trust Fund. Yet to be honest with you, I never actually found any official statement about that by the band. But what we do know for sure is that after performing at Rock and Rio in 2001, Iron Maiden actually gave three special concerts on which they have raised funds for Clive Burr. We introduce you to the man of the hour, Mr. Clive Burr. And in addition to that, every band member actually gave away all of their royalties from the single Run to the Hills, which of course was released around that same time. Yeah, in case you are wondering, I'm talking about the live version recorded in 2001 and not the original one from the 1980s. In addition, the band's label EMI UK also gave away all of their profits in support of Clive Burr's Mass Trust. Fun, thus helping the band raise the total of 235,000 pounds. Yet sadly enough, of course, Clive Burr still passed away in 2013, actually a couple of months before Iron Maiden returned to Rock and Rio for the third time. Basically, he just came down from audition and, and he played Transylvania and a couple of other songs like that. <laughs> I, d I didn't even learn them, you know, I just played along with them. I just fitted in with them. Just clicked. By the way, in case you were wondering, that second time Iron Maiden actually performed in front of a much smaller crowd than the first time they made it to Rock and Rio, don't worry, it was still 250,000 people there. In 2013, Iron Maiden returned once again to Rock and Rio to headline the Metal Night of the Festival, which since its establishment in 1985 has undergone major changes in terms of music performed there. Since for example that same year, the opening headliner on that same festival was of course Beyonce. That of course did not stop such bands as Iron Maiden and Metallica, which both headlined Rock and Rio that same year, to show all the other artists what rock is actually about.
And of course, the 2013 appearance at Rock and Rio by Iron Maiden was one of the most interesting ones in terms of the set list performed on that show, since every time Iron Maiden made it to Brazil before that, they were always in the middle of the sport tour for their previous album. Yeah, this time the boys were in the middle of their Maiden England tour, and so most of the tracks on this set list were actually performed from their album Seventh Son of the Seventh Son, and not from the Final Frontier, which was the latest studio album by then. Which once again proves the point we discussed in the previous episode on our Up the Irons series. That the Final Frontier is the most overlooked album in the entire Iron Maiden discography. Since none of the songs from this record were ever played on any tour other than the one in support of this album. But anyways, on that show and on that tour in particular, Iron Maiden played five songs from their magnum opus Seventh Son of the Seventh Son. That means almost as many as they did on the original Seventh Tour on the Seventh Tour. Which of course was no coincidence given the fact that Maiden England Tour was the third and final tour which was supposed to pay tribute to the early days of Iron Maiden. And which I assume made many Brazilian fans very and very happy since Iron Maiden actually never made it to Brazil or South America overall back in 1988. Since Iron Maiden performed at Rock and Rio in 2013, the level of happiness on that festival has been steadily decreasing for the next couple of years, up to the point that in 2017 no heavy metal bands at all were invited to participate in Rock in Rio, which kind of defeats the whole point of Rock in Rio. And so in 2019, the concert organizers decided to redeem themselves in front of their fans and pay the tribute to the original 1985 festival by announcing the entire day of heavy metal on Rock in Rio 2019, invited Scorpions, Halloween, Sepulchre, and of course Iron Maiden to perform all in one day. Here are the dark. Brazil! And of course, Brazilians once again proved what kind of music they want to hear at Rock in Rio. Since the metal day of the 2019 edition of that festival has been sold out under two hours after Iron Maiden were announced as the first headliner. <laughs> By then, Rock and Rio was pretty much a second home for Iron Maiden. Bruce Dickinson kept on going, giving a lot, a lot of compliments to their Brazilian fans, stating that Rock and Rio is possibly the biggest festival there ever was and there ever will be, and promised to keep returning every time they can possibly do that. And then, during the trooper set, if the crowd will be loud enough, they might return even next time Rock and Rio happens. And we all know they did. <laughs> So just around a week ago, Iron Maiden once again headlined Rock in Rio 2022. And even though they technically did that on exactly the same Legacy of the Beast tour they did in 2019, thus I think finally making it fair that they didn't play the second night back in 1985. It's just outrageous. But anyways, the set list was of course rather different. And since we did do a very long episode on the set list and the overall appearance of the Legacy of the Beast tour, which by the way, if you haven't checked out and you're planning to go to any of the Iron Maiden shows in the United States or anywhere else, please make sure to check it out over here. Thus, I'm not going to go into the setless details of their latest appearance at Rock and Rio. <laughs> still wanted to point out a couple of interesting things. Shortly after Steve Harris and the team made it to Rio de Janeiro, they actually received a golden certificate for their latest studio album, Sinjutsu, thus making Brazil the seventh country in which the band's 17th studio album, Sinjutsu, received golden certification. Secondly, I just wanted to point out that 37 years after first appearing at Rock and Rio, Iron Maiden still shake that place to its core, giving an absolutely amazing performance by the people who are not in their 20s anymore, yet who still have so much energy that they are able to light up the crowd of 100,000 people. And you see. And 
what amazes me the most is that even though the boy's age of course does have an effect on the way they perform on stage, and yes of course Bruce Dickinson's voice has changed a lot and especially after the health problems he had a couple of years ago, yet still this band remains so amazingly professional that they're actually able to make the songs they played 40 plus years ago sound fresh and powerful and just as energetic as they did back then. <laughs> So here's the thing, if you do have a chance to see Iron Maiden live on that tour and you're still contemplating whether to do that or not, do it. Because believe me, it's definitely worth it. But anyways, which is your personal favorite performance by Iron Maiden at Rock and Rio? Please let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this short video guys and we will prevail. Slava Ukraini!